Philemon chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. Not now as a servant, but above a servant, a brother beloved, especially to me, Paul, but now much more unto thee, Philemon, both in the flesh and in the Lord. If thou count me therefore a partner, receive him as myself. So, backing up where we've been so far. Onassimus is a runaway slave. He's come across Paul. He's gotten saved. He's shown the fruits of salvation. He's born again. He's, he's a new creature. And he has the works to back his faith. Philemon, the slave owner, unsure what he's going to do when he receives Onassimus in this letter. Paul is writing this letter to Philemon and saying, listen, this man, your slave, is now saved. He wants to get things right with you. I, Paul, am signifying that this man is true to the character of a Christian in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you would receive me, Paul, then receive Onesimus as you would of me. The friendship that we hold, Paul, between Paul and Philemon. If you were to receive me in your house, Philemon, well, receive Onesimus as the same. Now, we can't even be thinking about what Onassimus is thinking or even worried about. Is there any worry? How is Philemon going to receive me? What is he going to do? But there's no more master, but now a brother in Christ. They're both serving the same master, God the Father, Almighty Jehovah. Through the blood and in in the gospel of Jesus Christ that he suffered and died according to scriptures. And was buried and rose again the third day according to scriptures. That the Holy Spirit upon belief of the heart has, has cried, Abba, Father, for our adoption. We are children of God. We are the sons of God. And so is this Philemon and so is this Onesimus. A runaway slave has now come home. You're looking at the prodigal son. That's what you're looking at. So, so here we have an owner. But now a brother in Christ. From a man that he paid for. And yet both these men, Onassis and finally, they have been paid for. Look, let's look at Acts 20, 28. Both these men have been paid for. Now if I even paid cash, if you want, you know, coins, bills. But look, look let's look at Acts 20, 28. Therefore, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, Holy Spirit God, which he has purchased with his own blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. There it is. Oh, Nazareth has been paid by Philemon. I have been paid by the blood of Jesus Christ. Onesimus has been paid by the blood of Jesus Christ. Philemon has been paid by the blood of Jesus Christ. We're one family now. That's what Paul wants to get to Philemon. Listen, he's not a runaway slave coming back and, you know, I did wrong, what must I do? He's coming back to a brother in Christ. They are equal in the eyes of God, for all have sinned. But we are the children of God. Both save sinners. Now Philemon has got a message to learn of the Lord. After I paid for you, you became mine. And we read that in Acts 20:28. 20, Let's look at 1 Corinthians 6:20. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 6:20. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 20. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now that body. Well, look what Paul said over here. Both in the flesh and in the Lord. So the cross reference is pointing to 1 Corinthians 6.20. We belong to God's. We are God's property. Philemon. There's been a price paid much more on Onassimus than what you paid for him at the slave market. The blood of God. 
There's been a price paid for you, Philemon, upon the cross, the same cross, O Onesimus. But see, in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 7, 23, let's go there. Seven twenty-three. You're not bought with a price. I mean, you are bought with a price. Be not the servants of men. Onassimus has changed hands between Philemon. Onassimus has stepped above. Into the family of God. Now he's still a slave under Philemon. But now the service Onassimus has. Is not to Philemon alone. But to Jesus Christ. His savior to God his father. We all ought to do our jobs for God. And not just for the employer. Not just for the check. We ought to have the character. This slave is no longer doing the service to his master. Small M, but to his master, capital M. So finally, I'm sending him back if you want to keep him in servitude. Well, he has a greater master to serve than you. And he ought to be doing much better than he done before. He ought to be doing much, much better than the other servants that are not saved. We ought to be most improved workers on the job force as born-again Bible-believing Christians because that's what God's called us to do. We ought not be slackers and time wasters and clock watchers. We ought to be serving above the employer, but the employer, capital E, God the Father. Now this slave was dear to Paul. And I don't think if you read his letters, he's partnered with dead Christians. I don't think Paul would go with a lukewarm or a cold Christian. Demas said, hey, I'm had it. I'm done with this. Goodbye. Mark says, I'm going back home. Paul says, goodbye. Paul wants Onesimus back with him to be sent out to do work for Paul. Onassimus has now become profitable, and that's what Onassimus means. His name meaning is profitable for the ministry of God through Philemon and through Paul. He sought those that were willing to be verbs. And what I mean by verbs is to be action. You can sit or sleep. You can waste time, you can be lazy, you can be idle, but those are not the verbs that would call Paul to say, I want this guy back. That would be not the verbs of laziness and idleness that Paul would say, okay, let's go to work. I don't think those would be the people that Paul would hang around with. Lazy, sleepy, dead Christian. Serving, surrendering their lives to one that died for them. Paul wanted him on the mission field. Look at verse 13. Whom, Onassis, I would have retained with me, Paul, that in thy stead, Philemon, he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the God. Hey, listen, Philemon, I'm in chains in this jail. Onassis has been a great help to me. While I'm in jail. He has been a great help to the gospel of Jesus Christ. People are probably getting saved through Onesimus. I want him here serving me. As he's been doing. That says a lot. But. Finally, he's your property. Finally, he's done you wrong. He has run away from you. And we don't know if it's Onesimus or Paul. Somebody. Is sending Onassimus back to Philemon to get things right. We talked about that on the last video or audio, whichever you're listening to. I would assume, assume, 
the character that we see in Onassis, he's the one like, Paul, I got to go back to him. I got to get things right. And Paul sits down and writes this letter to Philemon. And he's asking Philemon, listen, he wants to get things right, but let him get things right between you. Let it be acknowledged that you are now sons of God. You are brothers in the Lord, but can you please send him back to me? I need him. But I can't keep him because he's your property. Now, how's that? Now, can you imagine the atmosphere it could have been like? And I don't say plantation. I don't know. If a saved slave could reach the other lost saves, slaves, what ruin... And I don't mean to adhere to slavery, the black men in America, but is giving them freedom to do whatever they want. Even the freedom was not to work. Now you got to look at the black American, the African American today. Poverty, jails, ghettos. And that is rebelling against their masters, rebelling against God the Father. Crimes, fatherless, multi-fathers that they'll never see. Welfare, turning to the government rather than to God the Father and Jesus Christ. That's their state today. And yet when they were under the plantations, they were under the churches. Yeah, there was a white section of the church and there was a black section of the church. But they heard the white man's God, Jesus Christ, being preached to them. Now listen, there were rotten slave owners. There were rotten plantations. There was rotten treatment of slaves down south and up north. But you can't say it's 100%. Many slaves in America came to know Jesus Christ by the plantation rather than ever knowing him in Africa. Now, don't you go and say, oh, I'm all, I'm all for slavery. And I, I'm not. But it's a Bible fact. And if you've got a slave who has trusted Jesus Christ as his Savior, he's got a master that's above all masters, God, as we've already talked about. And you can you imagine if Philemon says, no, Onassis, I want you. Okay, I accept the fact you're saved. I accept the fact that from Paul's letter, I want you to stay here. I want you to preach to everyone that's here. I want you to preach to the servants. And I want you to preach to those in the household. You are evidently good for the ministry, Paul said. Now, Think about the marvelous respects that Philemon would have if he were to keep Onassis. Onassis would be faithful to Jesus Christ. And what would happen around, we look at Philemon's house. Verse number two. And to our beloved Aphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the churches in thy house. Philemon has a church in his house. I don't care what you feel about living room ministries and all that. There's a church going on in his house. And now he has a servant who is saved, who is remarkable, who has a new creature, who is showing the works of faith, who is approved by Paul. This guy can do Philemon's house and Philemon's church much good. The servants would listen more to, to a slave than they would to the slaveholder. Onassimus has a wonderful ministry here. I can stay and serve Philemon with love and joy now. Or I can get permission Philemon to leave and go serve with Paul with love and joy. Both of them. Love and joy. The fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Whether I go with Paul, I'm allowed to go fight, or whether I stay with Philemon. Boy, God has given this man an avenue. A big fork in a road, and both forks are right. Work with other slaves, or go about when Paul's in still in bonds, and do whatever Paul has need to be done. They're both rewards. They're both crowns. Paul is going to get crowns by the service he's done to Onassis, by training and by having him do the work. 
Philemon will get crowns now when he allows Onassis to do, whether it be on his, wherever his plantation, I'll say. You may not like that word. But to work with Philemon's slaves and to work with Philemon's people. Both of them will get crowned, Philemon and Onassis. And if he says, Onassis, yeah, go back to Paul. Paul has a better name. Onassis will get crowns. Paul will be getting crowns. And Philemon will be getting crowns. People will be saved. The ministry will grow and be encouraged. And I don't think Onassis was going to go back to work and take advantage of salvation as boss. That's not his character, according to Paul. Onassis would go back and he work even just as harder. And do just as more. And do it in the name of the love of Jesus Christ. I think he wanted to go back and do right by and to Philemon. I think it's Onassis that wanted to go back. I think I think he sat down with Paul. Now, I, I am speculating, I am assuming, and I could be wrong. I'm a sinner. If I'm wrong, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. I think he sat down with Paul and said, Paul, i got to tell you something. I'm a runaway slave of this man named Philemon. And if I stole whatever it is, or whatever I, I run, run, run away. I gotta go back to make him things right, and I would think that Paul would listen to him and hear him out and say, "Oh, that's yeah, you do." By the way, what Paul? I know who Flying Lemon is. He's a friend of mine. And you know what, Onassis? I'm just assuming again. Allow me to assume, and if I'm wrong, I've already pleaded the blood of Jesus. Christ. I'll write you a letter to send them back. And when you go back to Onassis, I mean, when you go back to find me, rest assured that not only is he your slave owner, your master, with a small M, but he is also saved too. And you both are the children of God, the sons of God. Now, Part of that assumption could be wrong because he says Philemon has a church in his house. They're fellow laborers. They're fellow soldiers. I would assume again that Philemon has witnessed to all his servants. I don't know. And if he had, Onassis would know that Philemon is a Christian. And with that aspect, if he knows Philemon is a Christian, he's relying on Paul saying, listen, if he's saved like I am saved, right? He ought to have the same heart as I have. And I'll go back to him, repenting and in mercy, and wanting to do right. And he will receive me, not as a runaway servant, but as a Christian. And Christian, brotherly love, love thy neighbor and all that. So maybe that sets forth for Onassimus to do right. So the fellows that we read and study about, above all, if you are mad at this man for running away, receive him as what? As a fellow helper. As Paul means that Onassis will help, he's a reliable man. Above all, receive him as myself, as a friend, as a brother in the Lord, as a servant of the Lord, do it as a favor. Do it for Jesus Christ. For John and Paul and Jesus will write, Love thy neighbor. So, we run on the aspect of Christian fellowship, Christian love of the brethren. Philemon will learn now that not only is he getting a slave owner back, a servant, but he's getting a dear brother in Christ. And if Paul is speak, speaking about this man in greatness, not only am I getting a servant back, but I'm going to get a great servant who's already shown fruits of repentance, who's already gone above and beyond what any of his servants who are lost are going to do. And knowing that he wants to do right, Paul drops a big bomb on him. I want him back. 
I want to use him for the ministry. I want to do right for the ministry. And it's almost like Onassis is going to be wanted by all. By God, by Philemon, and by Paul. When Nazareth has gotten saved, boy, he didn't realize what benefit God's going to do for him. Now, as I said that when he's got a fork in a road, it, it, the fork is he's walking straight. He's doing straight according to Paul. Now, he's got a fork. He's got Paul and he's got Philemon. They're both wonderful walls or walks. Roads, left or right. Now, if I leave them, Paul and Onassis is going to have to pray because though both those roads are correct for Christian servitude, Onassis can be in the state right now to take the wrong road where God doesn't want him. Now, the root of Philemon is, okay, I can go serve and help other servants in the name of Jesus Christ. I can be a pattern, a witness to other people in the fields, in the household. Or I can go with Paul, and I can help Paul who's in jail, in bonds, in chains, to outside areas of, I mean, all of Asia. Again, forgive me if it's a bad word. He can do the plantation or he can do all of Asia around Paul. They're both great, wonderful ministries. I'm praying to the Lord right now. I've got right now, I've got a flea market on Friday, which is wonderful and great. And I've got a farmer's market on Saturday mornings, which is wonderful and great. And I'm praying for more. But for Onassimus, the thing is, okay, if I go follow Paul which is wonderful and great, is that where God wants me? If I stay with Philemon and, and help him out and his church, is that where God wants me? I can go serve one church under Philemon through Jesus Christ, or I can go serve many churches under Paul. Now, one church, many churches. One place, Philemon, or many places, Paul. It all is wonderful. It is all great. And as he comes to that fork and road of Philemon or for Paul, now he's got, Lord God, where do you want me to go? They're both great. They're both wonderful. The last place Onassis would do would be go to the wrong road and be against the will of God. That's a rarity for Onassis and others. That God has opened two ways to you. He's cracked that door open and both those doors are wonderful and great for ministry work. And now you got to pray to God and say, well, which one do you want me to take, Lord? You know what I mean? It is remarkable that you have to trust in God. Onassis is a great worker. He's doing right. And yet, now God has given him a choice in his life. He's got to pray. Now let's look here for instance. Colossians 4.9 with Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you. They shall make known unto you all things which are done here. It looks like Onassimus went back to Paul and was sent out. Colossians 4.18, And the salutation by the hand of my, me, Paul, remember my bonds, still in jail, grace unto you, amen. And it says it's a writ, written from Rome to the, Col the Colossians by Tychicus and Onassimus. So it looks like Philemon allowed Onassimus to go back to Paul, and he was used by Paul, especially to the Colossian church.
We've got to realize when we come to these ways in our own lives. And we've got to pray to God for the direction. To me, both as far as the ministry, because I am I am coveting <laughs> from a ministry to serve the Lord and do right with all that the Lord showed me. But when I get to that point and when God opens the door, I want to make sure that that door is God's door to be open. And that's where he wants me. And you've got a faithful man who, who's doing right. And with the wrong direction, it's not going to please God. It's not going to be approved of God. And we know Paul's a prayer. And not only is he praying for Onassis in that direction, whether to Philemon or me, Paul, <clears throat> but Paul's praying too, because you know, I don't want to lead this guy in the wrong direction. But I really need his help. He's really that faithful. So, when we look ahead and we see the doors opening, as it's done for Onesimus, two wonderful great doors, we've got to pray to go the right way. And I don't mean left or right, because that right door may be the wrong door, as far as direction. And we, in our times, may have two wonderful, great opportunities. And to take prayer. And you study Paul's books and epistles. He is a prayer warrior. I'm hoping the announcements picked that up. So Paul's regard is, put him in my state. Receive him as you would receive me. He's no longer that runaway slave. He's a new creature in Christ. And after you two have made things up and getting right, can you send him back to me? That's a big avenue. 